when your words please God he takes you places when your words don't please God you stay where you're at Holy Ghost he is God in the earth today and you walk with him by saying words my name is Andrew Hemstrut join us if this is the first time here make sure that you subscribe and if it isn't your first time here and these messages are blessing you be sure to become a partner with us and we thank you for it we have come to a place of knowing what age we're in what dispensation we're in we are in the age and dispensation of the Holy Ghost Yes. if he's the God that's in the earth and we're his temple who do we walk with yeah, the, Holy Ghost. the Holy Ghost our everyday fellowship is with him the Holy Ghost the person of the Holy Ghost mm -hmm. how do you walk with the Holy Ghost who is God in the earth by saying words by speaking in agreement with his word so we've come to this place of knowing now a lot of people haven't come to that place you understand that right mm -hmm. they aren't here yet well they need to be here yeah. So the Holy Ghost is God in the earth and you walk with him by saying words I know I say this a lot I say it almost every time that we get on here but that's where we're at we've come to that place of knowing and we need to stay on message say stay on message, stay on message. because a lot of people have not heard this a lot of people don't have this knowing they haven't come to this place of knowing yet well how are they gonna come to this place of knowing how do they come to believe anything without a preacher mm -hmm. so somebody's got to preach it yes. mm -hmm. are you here yes. and I'm encouraged many times I know I I know because I check up on some of these things we have a lot of pastors and preachers that have been tuning into our messages well, that's okay mm -hmm. they can have they can have the Spirit of God come on them just like anybody else yes. is this true yes Amen. you must hear it first before you can believe it is that right yeah. and so we've got to keep preaching it the fact that the Holy Ghost is God in the earth today and you walk with him by saying words I don't want to hear it anymore well are you there yet have you come to that place of knowing is that how you live your life so my words will make sense to those who are called to go on I understand this message isn't gonna resonate with everybody that's too bad I feel bad for them but my words will make sense to those people who are called to go on and have ears to hear mm -hmm. I have something I have something that other people don't have a lot of people won't like that matter of fact that's what they did to Jesus they wanted to throw him off the cliff didn't they mm -hmm. when he said he had something that other people didn't have mm -hmm. well we have something here are you here yes. can you hear it yes. I have something that other people don't have and how do you get it you get it by hearing it then you have it mm -hmm. is this true yes. is it exciting yes. if you can hear it on the inside you can have it if you can hear it on the inside you can have it if you can't hear it well then you can't have it and I'm gonna say several things tonight that I just have to say so hear it with the ears of your spirit there is a place in the spirit that we must go to there's a place in the spirit that we must go to and I will take you there if you can hear it if you can't hear it then you can't go there but I'm anointed for this I'm anointed to take you there but this is the plan this is the path walk ye in it but in order to go to that place there must be change and you are the one that changes is this good news mm -hmm. say I'm the, one that I'm the one that changes we go from glory to glory we go from good acceptable to perfect we're the ones that do that we're the ones that change mm -hmm. so to go to that place that I'm talking about requires change this message will change you it'll change your thinking it'll change your believing it'll change the place where you can go to well I don't want my chain my believing to be changed or my thinking to be changed well guess where you can't go where that thinking and believing will take you mm -hmm. you become different you change I've changed 
i testify to the fact that i have changed you will go through many transformations if you're going to go from good to acceptable to perfect if you're going to go from glory to glory you're the one that's going to go through the transformation mm -hmm. say i, I will, go will go through many, many. Transformations. transformations and by transformation we mean changes you are going to change your thinking has to change your believing has to change well i've changed i've come to know that the holy ghost is god in the earth and that i walk with him by saying words i didn't always believe that it didn't it wasn't that it wasn't somewhere embedded in doctrine somewhere in the back pages mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. but it wasn't the forefront it wasn't who i was and how i lived my life my my thinking and believing has changed to where i know that the holy ghost is god he's in the earth and i walk with him mm -hmm by saying words that's a change that's a change brother it is a change it's a huge change mm -hmm. so i'm different yes you are i'm different than i used to be mm -hmm. if your thinking is this way and your believing is this way you've changed Amen. Yes. is this true yes. and that change what you're thinking and believing will take you to a place that you couldn't go before without that thinking and believing does this make sense yes. because you have to change from one to the next in order to go there using the words i worship you holy ghost has changed me fundamentally changed me changed the way i think changed the way i view scripture changed my outlook on everything and it's completely different than what i was thinking and believing before mm -hmm. now i worship the holy ghost as god in the earth today and when i use those words i worship you holy ghost it changes me and has changed me and will continue listen and will continue to change me and transform me into something else what if i wasn't using those words before would i have been changed into what i'm being changed into now no. it's not possible so people that don't go here or refuse to go here or because of their doctrine or whatever refuse to use the words i worship you holy ghost can't be changed in this way and can't go to where we're going i worship you holy ghost using those words has changed me these words please god what words you say the words i worship you holy ghost saying those words pleases God it irritates a lot of people but it pleases God it may irritate you at first are you here mm -hmm. it may irritate you because it you're not used to going that way mm -hmm. like putting on a new pair of sneakers or something it irritates you you're not used to them well break it in keep going get used to it use of the words I worship you Holy Ghost pleases God I hope that you can understand that I hope you can hear that say when I use the words when I, use the words, I worship you Holy Ghost, I'm, Holy Ghost. I'm, pleasing God. I'm pleasing God isn't that good yes. do you want to please God yes. well I'm gonna show you as we're going through this message tonight that it is your words the right words that pleases God that causes transformation to happen to you if using the words I worship you Holy Ghost pleases him the object of that what's gonna happen you're gonna be transformed by it mm -hmm. so we are all to be changed change is the number one thing I know it's not the number one thing in most churches in most churches it's come as you are and stay as you are mm -hmm. so casual there is no change required you don't even have to change your clothes mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. I can go in my pink fluffy bunny slippers and my I don't have any but if I did I just just come as you are I've got news for you listen there are places in the spirit that won't open to you until you change and if you don't change you'll never get there so the message is and our message here if you've been around long enough is change we have to change and what do we change our thinking changes our believing changes and then we can go to the next place mm -hmm. is that right yes. mm -hmm. all right so we are all to be changed 
I won't have you turn there, but 1 Corinthians 15, 52 says, we shall all be changed. We shall all be changed. So change is what we shall all be. Is this making sense? Well, and that verse specifically was talking about the last days. Are we in the last days? Then we are to be changed. We're the church, the last day church, that has to be changed more than anyone else. From glory to glory eventually to glory glory well, second Corinthians chapter 3 verse 18 says we are changed from glory to glory meaning we're changed say we are, we are. Changed. changed so who's changed we are from one glory to the next glory what if we don't change do we go to the next glory we don't go nobody wants to hear that but that's the truth Romans chapter 12 verse 1 and 2 says we are changed from good to acceptable to perfect you're never gonna get to perfect without going through acceptable mm -hmm. are you here that's right. our message has been and is right now one of change we change from glory to glory we change from good to acceptable to eventually perfect if our goal isn't transformation or translation or change then we're reading the Bible wrong the message is change we're changed from one thing to the next thing we're transformed from one thing to the next thing mm -hmm. right yes. if you're doing it right if you're reading your Bible right mm -hmm. our goal if our goal isn't translation or transition from one to the next then we're reading it wrong and if you don't know what your end goal is then you have no direction what are you without direction just floundering around you're not going anywhere so we're the last day church we should know this stuff we should know where we're at we should know who we are we should know where we're going mm -hmm. right and if that glory is a place in the spirit that we're supposed to transition into mm -hmm. then we need to know that we should know that this is the age of the Holy Ghost the Holy Ghost dispensation and we walk with him right say walk with him, walk with him. by saying words. saying words let's look at Enoch who is a type of the last day church mm -hmm. Enoch walked with God Genesis chapter 5 verse 21 and Enoch walked with God after he begat Methuselah 300 years what did it say Enoch did walked Enoch walked with God he's a type of the last day church up until our day when the Holy Ghost came into the earth men did not walk with God because he didn't come and live with them like he does with us verse 24 and Enoch walked with God what did Enoch do he walked with God and he was not for God took him and we understand we'll be looking at some other verses of Scripture he was translated from one place of existence to another God took him God accepted him he was translated which means he was changed from one glory of walking with God to glory type of the last day church Enoch walked with God and he knew God as the Spirit of God that's my point here type of the last day church we walk with God and know God as the Spirit of God or the Spirit God all right Enoch walked with God was not for God took him here it says that Enoch walked with God I've been saying that walking with God is by speaking let's go to Jude verse 14 and Enoch also the seventh from Adam prophesied of these things saying so here we see that Enoch was a prophet mm -hmm. what do we know that prophets are supposed to do they prophesy but prophesying is saying what God says so when God says something they say something different no, no they're supposed to say the same thing mm -hmm. so here we see direct evidence of the fact 
that enoch walked with god by saying things that were in agreement with god mm -hmm. do you see that enoch also the seventh from adam prophesied of these things saying are you getting it mm -hmm. we know from Genesis that Enoch walked with God we see here in Jude verse 14 that Enoch prophesied saying things so he walked with God by saying Amos chapter 3 3 says how can two walk together except they be agreed or be saying the same thing how did Enoch walk with God by saying by speaking things in agreement and the things that he said pleased God and he was transformed by it Hebrews chapter 11 verse 5 by faith who Enoch. Enoch was translated or changed for before say before. before before his translation he had this testimony that he pleased God mm -hmm. he had a testimony that pleased God he had words that he said say he had words he had that he said, he said that pleased God. Therefore, he was translated. So he was translated via the words he was saying that were in agreement with God. It's the same way that we walk with God in our day. If our words are in agreement with him concerning our physical body and healing and youth renewal, mm -hmm. then we will walk with God in healing, health, and youth renewal. It pleases God so Enoch walked with God by saying words he had a testimony his testimony was part of the thing that translated him his testimony pleased God he's a type of the last day church he walks with God speaking words that please God and is translated or changed if you please God by what you say you advance say if I please God, I please God by what I say, what I, say. I, advance. I advance see and we go from glory to glory you advance by what you say if you please God by what you say you advance if you don't please God by what you say you stay where you are how many people don't like this message mm -hmm. a lot if you please God by what you say you advance can you see that through what we read here with Enoch yeah. by faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death for before his translation he had a testimony before you have a healing you'll have your testimony before you have a prosperity you'll have your testimony that pleases God which means it has to be in agreement with God is this making sense yeah it's how Enoch walked with God he's a type of the last day church we walk with God the same way mm -hmm. Enoch walked with God we walk with God when your words please God he takes you places when your words please God he takes you places when your words don't please God you stay where you're at you don't get to go there Is this making sense people are hearing this when your words please God he takes you he takes you to the place of healing when your words please God he takes you the place of blessing and prosperity mm -hmm. when your words please God he takes you from good to acceptable mm -hmm. and if your words are acceptable to God he'll take you to the perfect will of God are you getting this mm -hmm it's how Enoch was translated it's how you'll be translated from one thing to the next mm -hmm. it's how you walk with God when your words please God he takes you to the place in the spirit where those things are you know your healing already exists right mm -hmm. you know your prosperity already exists you know your blessing already exists all the things that you need already exists but you have to go there we go there say we go there. we go there how do we go there say you by the vehicle of our words pleasing God mm -hmm. just making sense Enoch literally means initiated so Enoch was initiated 
you know how you might do the secret society or something they have to go through certain things and almost always they'll have to say certain words right they had to say certain things to be initiated mm -hmm. into right. initiated it always means into something right well enoch's name meant he was initiated into what say you into the things of god walking with god in what he said he was approved he must have said the right thing to be approved to be initiated so enoch walked with god and he was changed by the things that he said he was initiated into the things of god into the things of the spirit he went into the spirit came out went into the spirit came out went into the spirit came out went into the spirit and never came out mm -hmm. type of the last day church enoch means initiated it can also be translated disciplined one he couldn't be initiated until he was disciplined what do you think he had to be disciplined in his words what he said god wouldn't accept him until he was initiated and disciplined in the things that he said james chapter 3 verse 10 says out of the same mouth proceeds blessing and cursing my brethren these things ought not so to be if i were to stop saying cursings and blessings out of the same mouth i would be disciplined right so that i'm only gonna say blessings say only blessings, only blessings. right i'm not gonna say sickness and health out of the same mouth i'm gonna say only health are you here yeah. i'm not gonna say uh poverty and wealth out of the same mouth i'm only gonna say wealth say wealth, wealth. you have to be disciplined in order to be initiated are you getting this mm -hmm. out of the same mouth out of the same mouth proceeds blessing and cursing my brethren these things ought not so to be you need to be disciplined you need to have your mouth going in one direction what direction is that in direction with pleasing god saying the things that he says if you want to have the transformation that he has for you so enoch was disciplined and then he was initiated by what he said let's go to matthew 25 can you see how the transformation takes place when you're speaking what god says and only what god says about a certain situation you're transformed in it he takes you to the place where you have victory in that situation matthew chapter 25 let's just read this then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom and five of them were wise and five were foolish and they that were foolish took their lamps but they took no oil with them that's pretty foolish right though they had a lamp that had no oil in it verse 4 but the, the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps and while the bridegroom tarried they all slumbered and slept and at midnight there was a cry made and behold the bridegroom cometh go ye out to meet him see they had to go out to meet him they had to get up and go somewhere say get up, get up and go somewhere. go somewhere verse 7 then all those virgins arose and what trimmed. trimmed their lamps now I mean cut the top of the lamp off or what did it cut off it trimmed down the wick mm -hmm. say the wick. the wick well the wick in this illustration in my opinion is li likened unto the tongue mm -hmm. you have to have your tongue trimmed down to where you're saying only what god says right and then you light it and it keeps going and the foolish said to the wise give us of your oil for our lamps are gone out but the wise answered saying not so lest there be not enough for us and you go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves mm -hmm. so they weren't ready to go and they didn't have the right kind of oil or any oil in them we're talking here about a journey that requires the Holy Ghost and your wick to be trimmed 
I mean you've got it you got to have you got to be in a relationship with the Holy Ghost and you've got to have your wick or your tongue saying the right thing mm -hmm. if you're gonna make it well speaking in tongues is a type of an oil of the Spirit it is evidence of the indwelling of the Holy Ghost mm -hmm. and it's transformative say speaking in tongues, speaking in tongues is, transformative. is transformative why would it be transformative because you're speaking as the spirit gives you utterance you're speaking in agreement with him mm -hmm. right and if you trim it to where you're saying more specifically and accurately mm -hmm. what he's saying mm -hmm. it's transformative what's it change what does it transform it transforms you mm -hmm. it's one of the ways that we can speak in agreement with God the Holy Ghost and there'll be joy that comes with it you mm -hmm. speak long enough and you'll have the joy of the Lord mm -hmm. so speaking in tongues is speaking in agreement let's look at quickly at Acts you can see why God the Holy Ghost is doing this I often think about it and I find it very curious that is the first thing that he had people do when he came into the earth gave them the ability to speak as he gives them utterance right. it's literally the way he came in which means it has to be very important to him mm -hmm. do you suppose it's important for you to be able to speak in agreement with God yes, yes. well let's look here let's see uh, Acts chapter 1 let's look at verse 8 but you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost is come on you what happened after the Holy Ghost came on them they began to speak mm -hmm. so they got power after the Holy Ghost came on them and they began to speak and you shall be witnesses unto me you shall be witnesses or you shall testify you will have a testimony you're speaking as the Spirit gives you utterance and therefore you're saying things your testimony say testimony, testimony. what did Enoch have that pleased God a testimony before he was translated mm -hmm. this is part of the testimony that you must have if you're gonna go on the journey from glory to glory but this is a testimony that you must have to please God well let me ask you a question if if you didn't receive the Holy Ghost and speak with other tongues right you would be thinking one way mm -hmm. and then what if you did believe that you could receive the Holy Ghost and speak with other tongues and then did that mm -hmm. would your thinking change yes. yes would your believing change yes. you see what's happening here mm -hmm. you're being transformed from one glory to another that's just the first step mm -hmm. that's the beginning of the journey Romans chapter 12 verse 1 I beseech you therefore brethren by the mercies of God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice holy acceptable unto God which is your reasonable service now here it says you present your body I always ask this is your tongue part of your body yes. if you cause your tongue to be holy and acceptable unto God wouldn't that be like trimming it back mm -hmm. wouldn't that be like disciplining it mm -hmm. wouldn't that be a function of what's required to have you initiated into things of God mm -hmm. yes. yeah present your bodies a living sacrifice holy acceptable say acceptable acceptable, acceptable unto God which is your reasonable service and I brought this out many times the word reasonable service can be translated spiritual worship mm -hmm. if you're using your tongue to be wholly acceptable and spiritually worshiping God who did it say you're supposed to present that part of your body and worship to God the one that came in your body mm -hmm. and be not conformed to this world but be ye say ye, ye ye transformed so while I present my tongue which is a part of your body mm -hmm. disciplined initiated unto God the things of the Spirit of God mm -hmm. speaking in tongues and speaking in agreement with his word and worshiping him mm -hmm. be ye not conformed to this world but transformed if I'm transformed is it gonna renew my mind yeah be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you 
may prove what is that good acceptable and perfect will of God if I'm proving it then I'm being changed from one to the next mm -hmm. say I'm being changed I'm being changed I'm changed when I begin to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gives me utterance mm -hmm. I'm changed from good to acceptable to perfect I'm changed when I speak in agreement acceptable to God that by Jesus stripes I was healed sickness cannot stay in my body who's changed I'm changed what am I changed into one that has that is healed mm -hmm. and sickness cannot stay in my body right. is that a glory compared to not being healed yes. I've gone from not being healed to being healed and sickness cannot stay in my body I've gone from one glory to another glory mm -hmm. I've gone from good well I'm alive that's good how about alive and healed mm -hmm. that's really good that's that is acceptable mm -hmm. you see what's happening here mm -hmm. holy acceptable now if my tongue and my mouth are holy what does that mean I'm not speaking blessing and cursing I'm my my speaking is initiated my speaking is disciplined to say only that that's holiness be not conformed to this world but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove say I'm proof I'm proof I'm, proof. I'm living proof that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God no one gets to perfect without being acceptable first I have to have myself changed and my speaking changed and my thinking changed and my believing changed before I can even see what the next thing is you can't even get there you can't even see the next hill or mountain until you get up on top of one mm -hmm. so you've got to take what's good and start saying it mm -hmm. and then you'll see the acceptable yeah. mm -hmm. and then when you get when you see the acceptable you start saying that and it'll take you to the perfect That's right. but each one requires change it'll require change in your thinking it'll require change in your believing and it always they always. always it always requires change in your speaking because that's the vehicle that we use to go from glory to glory is this making sense yes. no one gets to perfect without being accepted and you don't get to accepted without speaking the words mm -hmm. every new level has a new level of words every new glory has a new set of words you have to say to go there you know people like to you know balk at the idea of having to say the words I worship you Holy Ghost or worshiping the Holy Ghost I'm telling you you can't go to where those words will take you until you use those words mm -hmm. it's a perfect example mm -hmm. much like you can't go to where speaking in tongues will take you if you don't use those words mm -hmm. we're talking about the Holy Ghost this is how he does things new words new level new faith mm -hmm. say new faith, new faith new believing and your believing changes your old thinking won't transform you into the new second Corinthians chapter 3 verse 16 nevertheless when it shall turn to the Lord the veil shall be taken away when it shall turn to the Lord the veil shall be taken away now the Lord is so if I take the veil away now the Lord is that spirit but the Holy Ghost is that spirit mm -hmm. and where the Spirit of the Lord is there is Liberty where would this be behind the curtain meaning they had to have a veil taken away first do you suppose that your words would change when that veil is taken away most people don't have those words because they haven't had the veil taken away they have to have words to help them remove the veil mm -hmm. and once the veil's taken away they can say now the Lord is that spirit mm -hmm. because they know the spirit is Lord mm -hmm. or they know the spirit as Lord and there's a liberty there could those people have that liberty without the veil being taken away or without saying those words mm -hmm. they wouldn't have that liberty meaning there's a liberty available that they can't go to 
but we all with open face beholding as in a glass or a mirror the glory of the Lord the Lord that spirit are changed what is the main thing that we're called to do be changed mm -hmm. by the Spirit of the Lord by saying words in agreement with him mm -hmm. are changed into the same image from glory to glory even as by the Spirit of the Lord this is our job this is where we're at this is where we're going being changed from glory to glory to glory to glory mm -hmm. by the Spirit of the Lord it's a good life it's a good time to be alive isn't it yes. let me pray for you Holy Ghost I thank you that these people are being changed and these words are literally going into them and changing them right now say this after me Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. I worship you you are God in the earth today and I walk with you by saying words and I go from glory to glory to glory even as by you the Spirit of the Lord in Jesus name Amen the Father is in heaven Jesus at his right hand Holy Ghost your God in the earth